I have in my library a book It's entitled Great Sports Quotes. And it's got quotes from people from all areas of sports in it, a lot of different ones. But in that, the favorite ones that I find in that book are those that were given by Yogi Berra. Most of you, who, if you remember Yogi Berra, was a catcher for the New York Yankees and became well known for his great quotes that he would give sometimes. Uh, Statements that were true, but were kind of odd that would cause people to laugh at him. He said, for instance, one time, in regard to the way the economy was going at that time, he said the nickel ain't worth a dime anymore. Well, it's absolute true, but it's kind of strange, wasn't it? One of my favorites was when the Yankees had won the World Series, and they had been invited to the governor's home uh, for a dinner, and uh, when Yogi came, he was dressed in a lime green suit. And when he was introduced to the governor's wife, she was kind of taken aback, didn't really know what to say, but she finally just says, well, that's a mighty cool suit you've got on. And Yogi replied, says, thanks, you don't look so hot yourself. <laughs> he was known for that type of thing. But the thing that, that I like best about him, and it's one that's, that's most common, we're we're all common, you know, have the idea of when in sports the situation is bad for the home team, it looks like there's no way they can win. Uh, they're so far behind. And, you know, there were some who'd say, well, we don't give up. You know, the old saying they had was, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. Well, Yogi Berra had something similar to that. Yogi Berra said, it ain't over till it's over. And that's absolute truth. But it's kind of strange to think of it that way. It ain't over till it's over. Well, I came across a story, and I think I maybe have talked about this before, but it was about a high school football game some years back, played in Michigan uh, by John Glenn High School, and the other school uh, was Canton, uh, West, Westland, Michigan. Uh, the game, John Glenn was behind at the time, 27 to 28, with eight seconds to go in the game. And so they lined up for what they hoped was going to be the winning field goal. The snap was good. The hole was good. And it looked like the kick would be good, except the kick was blocked. And the team who blocked it went running off the field in jubilation, shaking their hands and and cheering and everything. But they failed to realize that when they blocked the kick, the, the ball never went beyond the line of scrimmage. And so it was still a live ball. A young man by the name of Tony Wilton, who was the holder on that field goal attempt, noticed that, and he ran over and picked the ball up and took running, off running for the goal line and scored the winning touchdown. And John Glenn won 33-28. to The eight seconds were gone. The other team thought they'd won, but it ain't over till it's over. And John Glenn won the game on that occasion. Well, I think spiritually there's a lot that we can use to apply that to in our lives. When Jesus wrote to the church at Smyrna in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, the latter part of that verse, he had said, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. It ain't over till it's over. It can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing for a person spiritually. I think about Demas that we read about in the Bible. Paul described him on one occasion as a fellow laborer. Now that word labor is different from the word work. Labor is a word that was used to describe working to the point of exhaustion. And Paul said that's the way Demas was. Working side by side with Paul, he was working himself to exhaustion for the cause of the Lord. And yet the last time Paul mentioned Demas in the Bible, in 2 Timothy, Paul said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. It ain't over till it's over. Here was a man that was living a great life for God, but he quit too soon. But there are other occasions we need to realize, too, that it can be a good thing. It can be a good thing, for instance, if you're an individual tonight who's never become a child of God, you need to understand you're in a lost situation. If you're here as a child of God, that's become his child, but you're not living faith for them, you need to understand you're in a lost situation. But it ain't over till it's over. Until your life 
ends, there's always that hope of salvation. And so tonight, if you're not a Christian tonight, if you believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, you're willing to confess Him before men repenting of your sins, you can be baptized with Christ to have all of those sins forgiven and be added to His church, become a child of His. If you're here as His child tonight, and you know you haven't been living faithfully for Him. You're in a lost situation, but it ain't over till it's over. And so you have an opportunity tonight to repent of those sins and pray to God for the forgiveness you need with the full assurance that God will forgive. And so tonight, if you need to respond in any way to the invitation of Christ, either to become His child or as His child to be restored, we encourage you to take advantage of the time and opportunity you have to obey Him and do His will while together we stand and while we sing.